Scott's going to try and uh, have you looking right at a very bright, young uh, Ray Crater. Uh, very distinguishable and very bright. Okay, Tim, this is Houston. That's a real good picture, and uh, we see the crater you're talking about. There. That's an awfully good TV picture. Okay, we ought to be coming up uh, on the left side of your picture uh, on Nipper here, if Tom can scan over to get it. Okay, we verify. Uh -huh. The spacecraft now over Smythe's. Affirmative, and that was F1 you were showing us there just a minute ago, Jim. Roger, okay, I've got this at full zoom. You like it at full zoom, or do you want it back down a little bit? Yeah. Uh, Joe, Tom, monitor, it looks like we've got some pretty good resolution here. You got fantastic resolution, Tom. Uh, you might back off the zoom just a little bit to give us a little bigger picture, get a little better orient. at ALC just so uh, we can get a comparison of the picture. Uh, stay there for about five seconds and then go on back to your present position. Okay, we're on inside right now and uh, we'll give you a mark when we go to outside. Roger. Okay. Mark it, we're on outside now. Can you see we just passed over a rail down there? The, the rail should be in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. Yeah, we've got a hint of it, Tom, and uh, the outside position on it, ALC, seems to give us better resolution down here than the inside. Uh, how's that compare with your monitor? Same way, Joe. The outside gives us lots better, and at this time, we're passing over a big crater now. You can see it with the rim there. Roger, got it. And it's got a couple small ones on the inside. Okay, the little small peak in there is a pure white. The rest of the crater is a brownish gray with several little spirals of white. How does it show up down there, babe? It shows up exactly the same, Tom. That's, that's perfect. Okay, it's... Okay, I've got a real bright red crater. I'm going to zoom in on it. The top of it is pure white, and there, you can even see, it looks like there may be some boulders around on it. I'm going to zoom on it. Roger, that's perfect. Okay, we think that's perfect. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, we think that may be Schubert, uh, Tom. That detail is just great, Tom.
We estimate this crater is about 40 miles in diameter. Again, for your edification, we are upside down going forward to keep the sun off the windows and also kind of conserve fuel. But uh, the rate you see there on the monitor, at least what I can see, is exactly our orbital rate here. John is maintaining a 315 orb rate upside down. Okay, we copy that. Thank you. And Tom, did you see all the little... Okay, we'll take you on the right side. Gene will show you the crater Langrenus. Tom, you're reading our mind. We were just going to ask you to take a shot of that if you could. Jim Lovell described the uh, terraces of this crater on Apollo 8. Okay, Tom, we're getting that picture very good, and that's a tremendous color you got. Yeah. 
Landgrenus, the uh, whitish crater in the center of the screen, is about 90 miles in diameter. Okay, Tim, this is Houston. Whatever you did there, if you were uh, if you were uh, playing around with your lighting, uh, that gave us a real good picture then. on the aperture at all uh, during this time? Yeah, that's what I was doing, and when I, when I open it up and then stop it down, my monitor just goes very clear for you. Yeah, same here, we confirm. When you stop it down a little bit, we get an awful lot of detail. It's just great. We're getting a real good picture of that central peak now. Okay, Gene, uh, we're wondering if you could zoom in on that central peak uh, with that aperture shut down a little bit. Oh, you got it. I'm sorry. The walls of Langrenus are about uh, two miles high. That central peak is about 7,000 feet above the floor of the crater. Down over here. I'm losing out of my window. Roger that. And just for your information, uh, your onboard vector looks great. Uh, we're satisfied with it. John's going to show you Mari Christium over there on his side. Okay, we're standing by. And you can see the horizon in the distance there. That's just absolutely beautiful. Well, on the left, on John's side, you're looking at the uh, sea of crises. On the right, we've got the sea of fertility. And uh, we're coming very shortly up upon Apollo Ridge out our hatch window. We're right over the, we're starting to look straight down over the Mari version. And here we'll, we'll show you the Tarantius twins and such A and B and say right down NASA one for us. Uh, Tom, the resolution, the detail that we're getting is just unbelievable. This, this is just great. We ain't getting bad detail ourselves up here. Roger that. Flat ridges really do uh, do stand out here uh, in the uh, Murray area. Down into to a, a crater like Tarantius, uh, 
golf, uh, that their shadows, which appear rather than to be peaks, they appear to be slight small boulders of some sort. Okay, are they down in the center of the crater, uh, Gene? Yeah, they all seem to be down in the flat portion of the crater. Hey, tell Jack to look at these little uh, ridges we have here. They look like they're all, oh, they could be four to 500 feet elevated and running various patterns. They're standing out pretty good on our monitor. Roger, we see them real good, Tom. Okay, it appears you're showing us uh, Furnace Gulch there now, Tom. The spacecraft should be just about opposite uh, landing site one at this time. Yeah, 
Sensorinus is a relatively new lunar crater and of great scientific interest. Here we come. Here's, here's the crater masculine. Roger, we copy. You can see the shadow in it. Roger, it stands out real good, Tom. Some shadows in there like there might be a boulder. There's masculine. Okay, we're going to try and show you some of these wheels. Uh, Diamondback uh, rill and the Sidewinder rill that are going across here that are very distinctive. They appear to be very shallow in areas and, uh, and the bottom seems smooth. However, some of the area that goes perpendicular to the sunlight is uh, deep enough to be in shadow. Okay, we copy all that. Yeah. <laughs> And here's our little nicknames, uh, the rails Diamondback and Sidewinder. Boy, uh, 10 inches Houston, those rails and uh, all these details are really coming out great. And that color doesn't hurt a thing.
Ken, this is Houston. Uh, before you terminate the TV, before you secure it, we'd like to have a uh, color chart shot so we can uh, calibrate things. Okay, stand by. Uh, no hurry on that at all, just before you secure it. Okay, uh, okay, Joe, looks like that's going to be all we can show. I wanted to show you Theophilus uh, looking uh, uh, across the Terminator. It's got two very distinct central peaks. It's a huge crater. Uh, the peaks are still lit. The uh, backside rim is still lit. But I don't think I've uh, been able to show it to you from what I can see on my monitor. Okay, we picked it up down here, uh, Gino. Well, it didn't come in too good on my monitor. I was hoping to get it to you before we passed too far away from it, but uh, we'll show you a color chart here in a minute. Okay, mighty fine. Among the interested observers here in Mission Control is astronaut Jack Schmidt, who is also a geologist and uh, worked with the crew uh, prior to this mission on lunar feature identification. By one second, Joe, we got to cover up a window slightly here. We'll knock it off right after this because we've got to repress